I think this is one of the most interesting ideas I've seen in my short time in the legislature, and I want us to have the opportunity to have a thorough debate about it, and uh, that process hopefully will pick up where it left off uh, earlier this year. So with that, Senator Crow, thank you for coming. For the record, it is a pleasure to uh, uh, be able to take just a couple moments uh, to talk about uh, a subject to appropriations of tax credits uh, in in our legislative process. Uh, the two main goals of this idea are to provide greater accountability, annual fiscal oversight and review of tax credits, as, re as well as greater flexibility in the allocations and options that you as elected individuals have when dealing with both good economic times and bad economic times. I would like to point out that I have provided a small packet for each of the members of the committee. It starts with a basic bullet point, why legislatures need to subject tax credits to the appropriations process. I also want to direct your attention to something that uh, staff, uh, Schmidt actually provided, and, and that is a, a uh, heading of subjecting tax credits to the appropriations process, where it has commonly asked questions and responses to those. Uh, I think it's a very well put together um, summary, I guess, of this proposal and would direct your attention to that. With that being said, I do want to hit on just a few things and then open myself up to any questions that members may have of the, of, of the committee uh, that just summarizes basically what I pointed your attention to. Hey, Jason, before, as yeah. you, as you, before you go into that, do you want to uh, quickly go through that packet, specifically some of the revenue? Sure. Uh, I thought those were you some pretty Yeah, and, and I, I don't serve on the Appropriations Committee, but I think many of you know that I, I spend an enormous amount of time trying to get my hands on what is going on with our state budget. Um, I guess the, the best explanation for that is um, I want to have as many options as I possibly can as an elected official before I have to make a decision on anything. I was a leading driving force and many of the people that serve on this very committee were opposed to the idea of making Medicaid subject to appropriations. And I wanted options. I wanted options in, in uh, driving that standpoint. If we can make Medicaid subject to appropriations, we can make tax credit subject to appropriations. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, why is this important? I want to just basically point out what we are facing as a state of Missouri. Uh, and, and that is the budget situation that we are in. Right now, uh, we all voted on, uh, as members of the General Assembly, whether we voted for it or against it, we voted on, a uh, state fiscal year 10 budget based on revenue estimates of 1% growth. Through the first quarter of the fiscal year, we are now experiencing 10% negative growth. For each percentage point, we are off that $70 million that has to be found or dealt with. Currently, if revenues decline uh, for the whole year of 10%, we're looking at a $1.059 billion shortfall in FY10. $1.059 billion shortfall. If projections uh, meet what our experts are saying, and, and I have great confidence in Dan, Dan Haug and, and Senate Appropriations staff, if their estimates, which they think we will finish between 5% and 8% decline, is a real possibility, uh, that will be $70 million for each and every percentage point we're off. Remember, we booked 1% growth. So uh, what we're looking at now, through FY10, Governor Nixon has already withheld $430 million. He has vetoed $325 million, or withheld $325 million, and he's vetoed $105 million. Now, if all we do is decline 1%, remember I told you we're at 10% decline now. If all we do is decline by 1%, the withholdings and vetoes will be more than enough to make up for that shortfall. But it does not look like we're going to do that. The governor will have to uh, do additional withholdings if 
our revenues decline 5% of $300 million. If it's 8%, he will have to do additional withholds of $500 million. Now, I want to talk about some options and I don't want to get too complicated in this. Many of you will recall I had long dialogues on the Senate floor with Gary Nodler, Senator Nodler, about what we were leaving in reserve of the federal stabilization funds. We ended up leaving in reserves $735 million in the federal stabilization funds. We spent more than 22 than I really liked. However, the governor has withheld and vetoed much of what was contained in 22. So we currently have about $900 million in federal stabilization funds available to make up for this shortfall. However, we spent $711 million of those federal one-time funds in ongoing state operations. Of that 711, 525 million of that is buried in DESE, and another 148 million is buried within higher education. So, if you spend all of the federal money this year dealing with our revenue shortfalls, you've got 525 million of that federal money that was spent in DESE, and 148 million that was spent in higher education. You will gut higher and elementary education unless you're going to find the savings someplace else. In my nine years in the General Assembly, I have yet to see the General Assembly cut anything. I've seen it reduce the expected revenue growth, and that had been called the worst cut that man had ever seen. I'm talking about real concrete cuts, money you don't have to spend. So with that being said, I would be very leery of the governor taking the $900 million that's sitting there in federal stabilization funds and just transferring, and I gave you a memo called the wild card transfer memo. This is highly technical stuff in budget that I didn't know of until this year. But evidently, we bury in House Bill 5 a provision that allows the governor to transfer money however he sees fit. If you guys will recall, at the end of last session, the governor took $250 million of the federal stabilization funds to pay off tax refunds. He didn't want to cut 09, and he didn't want to roll them into 10. So he just took $250 million of the federal stabilization funds that we left there, and he paid off state re uh, revenue refunds with the understanding and approval of Senator Nodler and uh, Senator Isaac, or Representative Isaac, uh on the respective budget. Didn't come back to the full Senate, didn't come back to the full House. That was a $250 million appropriation that I can promise you if I knew was going to happen, 22 would have never seen the light of day uh, because of the expenditures of those funds. So with that as a backdrop of a very real fiscal situation that we are seeing based upon not my numbers, but the best numbers we can get from Senate appropriation staff, we have a problem. And we have a problem that the General Assembly is going to have to address. My idea of subjecting tax credits to the appropriations process gives you options as a member of the General Assembly. That's all it does. Last year, in state fiscal year 09, Missouri redeemed $584.7 million in tax credits. If you were to make tax credits subject to appropriations, I'm not saying you would redeem more or less than that. I'm saying it's your call on a year-by-year -year basis on what you want to redeem and what you don't want to redeem. Right now, $584.7 million in tax credits redeemed in state fiscal year 09 were done without our approval, without our weighing a dollar expended there versus a dollar expended on education or for health care or for any other services that you as an individual legislator may think take precedent over a particular tax credit expenditure. My example this session was $25 million for the Kansas City Chiefs for an indoor practice facility and parking lots. Charlie Shields thought it was the greatest investment the state of Missouri ever made. Many of you thought it was the greatest investment that was ever made. But when you weigh that expenditure of $25 million versus getting rid of career ladder for teachers, where are you going to vote? What are you going to do? What I'm telling you right now is you don't have that option. What you do is you have a standing system that appropriates these tax credits, and then and only then, after all of the tax credits go out, you are left to determine and decide 
where you want to expend the rest of the dollars. Mm -hmm.